Hey. So it's All right. <laughs> nice. So uh, my mic here. So, uh, yeah, dude, what's going on? Um, how are the instructors doing? Oh, they're doing well. They're doing well. I've uh, been in contact with them to try and set them up for them to join us on some calls coming up. So okay. we should be, yeah. should be getting some new blood joining us on some calls. Um, also awesome. reached out to uh, to our buddy Tommy, and uh, we're going to be setting up a time with him. He's out in the UK, so we're just getting our right. uh, getting our timing figured out. All right, perfect. And All I'm right, looking perfect. at some other possible uh, self defense people that we can get on to a podcast oh. and just shoot the proverbial shit with. So yeah, great. Yeah, perfect, man. That's that's what we need. We need. Um, yeah. So uh, just update on the book. We are done with the first round of like edits. Mm -hmm. uh it's actually i said like the i don't know if i've mentioned before the guy joe uh, krayak who they hooked me up with for um actually writing it awesome 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 guy um yeah we just banged it out you know we just really have to go over the cover again just the copy that's on there mm -hmm. and then um i have to shoot about 80 picks which isn't a big deal um and then that's it. I mean, there's not going to be a ton of, you know, it's not going to be like a typical step-by-step -step martial arts book mm -hmm. um, where, you know, you're going to see every little nuance and things like that. Um, but it will, it covers a lot of ground. I'll get you a, um, a copy of the rough draft. You know, nice. when I have it done for you to look at, I mean, it's really easy to read. I mean, it just covers everything that we do. Um Yeah. So I'm excited. Well, it is, it is self defense for dummies, right? So I can be the fucking first dummy to right, right. <laughs> to see if I can if I can get through it. Right. <laughs> you know, I said like I like didn't mind reading it. You know, I mean that's why that's how like he would hand me the chapters and granted I knew the content because I wrote most of it, but the way that it's just amazing. Like when someone who knows what they're doing does something. Yes. It, you know, and you're like, oh my god, this is brilliant. And simple, and there's just something about it where you're looking at it's like watching a guy fight, it's like watching a guy, you know, lay brick. You know, you're watching it's just happening, like it's just a skill on a different level. Yeah. So, you know, I really um yeah, I really uh enjoyed the process. And we're like pretty much a month ahead of schedule. Nice. Need to get done. Yeah, I mean, everything was supposed to be we were supposed to be at this point on July 27th. So Everything was in. I'm sure there's going to be another. There's so the next in the process is I shoot. I shoot the picks. They insert them, and then we make sure they're all in the right place. And then they do a draft of the book. Then we send it out, and I'll send you a copy of that. And then, you know, once that's all final and approved, then it goes to production. Um, didn't realize like this company wiley publishing that does the four dummies books does two billion each year holy shit eh? <laughs> yeah they have 300 and like 40 titles and yeah they are massive publishing company massive but get, don't get me wrong there are some there are some titles that sell like a handful of books right and they obviously run their course if, especially if there's something that's like a lot of the stuff they do is in technology mm -hmm. so like they'll you know go about you know they'll you know i mean it's not like anyone's looking at like you know lotus one two three for dummies anymore <laughs> right you know so you know there's there's stuff like that but then there's so we're gonna really um promote the heck out of it uh and within our group especially on amazon because what happens i think with amazon if you get a bump in orders even if it's like 10 or 20 you know if you get a bump in orders when the book first drops it'll put you up to like the you know start to put you in like the best seller and the recommend recommended in the category it's fucking awesome yeah it's all so 10, all 10 books you're a fucking best seller that's great right. <laughs> it's something like it's something weird like that how the algorithm works but the, the reality is that you know it's nice in this it will be interesting because depending on how many i don't know how many book self-defense books amazon sells like typically and again, these things change because the internet changed a lot of shit. Um, but yeah. typically, like, you know, the four dummies books used to be like a category killer. Like, they would come in, and it's like if you wrote a book about roofing, and all of a sudden it came in roofing for dummies, it'd be like, here you go. Yeah. 
you know so um yeah that's uh so again i don't know you know we're going along for the ride it's been fun um yeah let's see what we got it's gonna uh, be it's gonna be interesting it's gonna be interesting to see how it all fucking comes out yeah yeah especially because now let me you know with the event of like podcasting you're doing that i mean it's easy to go promote you know we'll i'll go on whatever and you know the they can promote the book right off their own affiliate Amazon link. It's really easy to, you know, it's simple shit. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah, they, uh, you know, it's just not, and it's a big publishing company. So they got shit in stock. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if you saw this in the news, um, but my buddy who, uh, shout out to Tiger Shulman. He's a, um, he's one of the, uh, equipment like he runs the equipment purchasing for them shout out to my longtime buddy rick um i don't know if you see this a uh, boy eight is beaten to death by instructor the day after signing up at a chinese martial arts school so this happened in china okay all right um not that saying that there's a couple instances of these that happened overseas i couldn't find anything right off the top of my head in america about and I really didn't look into like martial arts injuries, um, you know, or martial arts liability or any of that stuff. But apparently uh, this kid, his parents signed him up. He was eight years old and he'd been beaten to death by his instructor the day after he signed up. I mean, oh, uh, I mean, I'm sure, that it's it's, you know, <laughs> I mean, you're dealing with, um, cultural issues here right i mean look obviously this is beyond wrong and disgusting that an adult puts his hands on a child and yeah so you know he went and they basically paid for a year in advance uh and the kid came home and he was covered in bruises i guess this is a picture this is a screenshot of him here He's taken to the hospital where he was declared dead on arrival Yeah, well, and, I, mean, I mean, I will be a bit of a dick here and say at least there's some good business practices taking the fucking full payment for the year. Right. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I mean, is, it, I mean, is it refundable? Right. I mean, it's a guy. <laughs> right. Good luck getting that. Can we get a discount? <laughs> yeah, good luck. I'm gonna prorate it the day he was there. <laughs> That's right. You know. Oh, holy like, fuck. I mean, look, it's. You know, you send your, your and again, I don't care what country you're in. Um, you send your kid to learn. You know, you're sending your kid to martial arts lessons typically because you worry about his confidence, you worry about his athleticism. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes know, he's being bullied, <laughs> right? And you know, now you get the problem with uh, martial arts in at least this country. Um, is that there's like zero oversight. Yeah. So like I, who have never really, I've never trained in Krav Maga. I could put up a sign tomorrow and say that I trained in Krav Maga. Yep. And you could say, no, you could post all you want. I could say, yeah. And I could, I could completely bullshit about what my background is and what my training is. And there's no, I mean, you could be like, oh, he's a fraud. He's this, he's that. There are no legal ramifications i mean frank dukes is walking around as the blood sport champion yep and he had his trophy made from the from a place down the street <laughs> you know so you know you're looking at like a massive i mean you got look you got coaches teachers you know clergy who have go through some vetting process and are still you know, abusing kids, sexually assaulting children, and they're vetted. Yep. You know, I mean, there's nothing vetting martial arts. I mean, it's more vetted in China and then this other, um, uh, this other uh, article I dug up when I was uh, searching uh, for uh, martial arts. This one, uh, instructor's death this one struck home 
uh, judo coach sentenced to nine years. At least, I mean, the guy got nine years after death of a student. This kid in Taiwan, again, he was again, he was about, he was like seven years old. Um, kid, uh, so apparently the instructor was unlicensed judo coach who instructed older students to repeatedly throw the boy. Um, Ho himself, the instructor, threw him more than 10 times before he finally fell unconscious. So they just gave him concussed. He was in a coma for 70 days before dying. I really don't know what fucking possesses people. Um, to throw you, somebody like that over and over and over. This. Right. Okay. But again, like here you've got a guy who's an instructor, you know, well, who let him, you know, who let him in? You know, who's... Yeah. You know, he's unlicensed. Okay, does that mean he's a brown belt? Does that mean he's, you know, I don't I don't know what unlicensed mean, means. But needless to, say, needless to say, he's in a class with a bunch of other people. So he's teaching. Um, you know, I don't know what possesses people to do this. But obviously, you know, you're, you know, when you put your, when you give, when you give your child over to, any um coach where there's physical especially you know physical i mean it could be even a track coach where you know you could run a kid to death right so yeah. you know you've got a really um as a i mean on the flip side haven't been a coach and an instructor pretty much all my life you know this is something i take insanely seriously as people's safety yeah um because it could go south so fast and, you know, there's, and, you know, you also have this, um, not that it happened with the case of these kids, because these are all like first day students, but, you know, these kids are going here, either their parents are telling them or they want to, right? Either way, you know, it is, the instructor is an extension of a parent, right? It is the authority figure. So they're going to, they're in there, you buy into it, you're going to want to please this person and do whatever they tell you to do. For the most part, you know, add to that, you know, a cult like atmosphere around this stuff. And that's why, you know, nobody's intervening. You yeah. would think that, you know, someone who is beating that other kid, that eight year old in China or the kid that's throwing these guys, you would think that someone What's the responsibility of the people around them. Right. You know, you're throwing this kid or you're hitting this kid and the kid is laying there and you're just kicking the shit out of him. Right. He's not. And it's, you know, you know, everybody's buying into it and allowing this to happen. You know, I mean, there have been times where, you know, I've been teaching throughout my career or training or sparring where, you know, there have been, but this is adult, you know, where there's been guys that have been a little too rough on some of the, yeah. students, you know, so now you go with them and you're like, okay, you know after you're telling, you know, after you're instructing them, Hey, just, you know, take it easy. And, you know, I'm seeing like a guy and I know it's because they're either, I don't think it's, I don't think it's, it's because they're, um, you know, malicious. I just think it's because they're nervous a lot of times and they don't know how to really control their adrenaline. Yeah. So, um, you know, you'll see these guys go hard and then it's like, you know, as an instructor, you'll be like, all right, well, I got to fucking, I got to set this guy straight. Right. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, and talking about this, I mean, just to kind of jump, it's still on topic, but to jump into some other systems that are out there, some other, um, you know, instructors that are out there who their whole fucking thing is based on egotistical people coming in and, you know, the, in the combatives world, reality based self defense, Krav Maga. I mean, and these people, it, it's not a real training session if you're not walking out completely fucked up and bruised and all this. And, you know, right. I'm just thinking to myself, it's like, why? You know, I mean, right. I don't want to fucking be fucking beat to shit anymore. You know, maybe when I was 18, 19, whatever, it was great. But like, you know what I mean? Yeah, There's dude, such a uh, different attitude in this industry. Without a doubt, it's, man. I mean, you know, I was that guy for a very large portion of my life, you know, where it was like, yeah, I like getting hit. I like mixing it up. I like, you know, doing all that stuff. Um, yeah, dude, for sure. And then, 
you know, you're, you know, but again, you know, the thing you got to realize and that most people realize it's like, not everyone is that guy. Yes. Right. So you're like, you know, as an instructor, you know, you've got to, um, you know, you got to temper that bullshit because, you know, that's not, this isn't your personal like proving ground or, you know, you've got a responsibility because people are coming in there for a variety of reasons. And also, you know, so, you know, when you do this, you never, ever, ever, you know, um, even when I was like training, you know, there's a group of guys that I would go hard with because I know they wanted to, but I mean, you know, it would be insane to grab somebody who, you know, you, you know what you're, you know, who it is you're, you're working with there. Right. So, you know, there are people that are in, that, you know, you could get seriously injured and they're not there for that reason. So, you know, it's a, it's a big responsibility, um, being an instructor and, you know, watching people's safety and making sure that, you know, people are interacting correctly with one another. Um, you know, especially, especially with combat sports, right? Because, you know, there's a sparring element to it and it's controlled, and, you know, someone can be going just to, can be either a lot better or going a lot harder than the other person or both. Right. So, you know, guys, and you know, knocking kids out, <laughs> you know, you got a problem now, you know, now these guys, you know, <clears throat> yeah, they're, you know, to attack a child because that's basically what it is, you know, yeah, they are, uh, they're broken, broken individuals. Yeah, it's just fucking unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Now yeah. I'm going to like look up martial arts deaths and see what, you know, I find locally. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, there's, I mean, look, I mean, coaches do the same shit, you know, running people, you know, doing too, you know, doing too much shit in the hot weather. Um, again, it's got that, you know, you have that team. We have this team tribe cult mentality. It's in us. It's natural. I feel better when I'm working with a team than when I'm working alone. I do. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, it's natural. So you want to belong and then you want to please. So again, this is a huge responsibility. If you're in a position of authority over people, especially if they're doing something physical, you know, where, you know, there's a risk of injury, there's a risk of heat stroke. And, you know, I mean, you got a kid that's, you know, that's, um, uh, you know, pushing himself and it's like you're running wind sprints and it's 80, 90 degrees out. I'm like, you got to be careful. Right? Yeah. You got to watch. And next thing you know, if you're not paying attention, some freaking kid collapses. So, you know, you need to know, you know, what is reasonable and, you know, what is, you know, um, abusive and what's pushing somebody. But here's the thing. It's like, if somebody's pushing themselves you know, like, let's say you got to do like a lap around the track. I don't know. I'm just throwing this out there. I mean, there are people that are going to jog and there are people that are going to sprint it. Right. So there's going to always be, it doesn't matter like how much you do. It's matters like how they do it. Right. So there's going to be people that are just going to naturally be able to go faster and push themselves and get more out of it. Um, you know, an opera, I'm not necessarily get more out of it because even somebody's driving, you know, bigger person running slowly, still getting a lot out of it. Um, but you know, they'll be able to, everyone can exhaust themselves to their own fitness level. Right. So there's that. Um, but yeah, singling a kid out and, you know, doing this type of stuff. And now, and, but I mean, let's face it. I mean, you go, like, you know, you go into any martial arts school, I mean, most of the times, <clears throat> I mean, when you're really drilled down on this stuff, you know, most of the times it's somebody who has, you know, learned from somebody else on best case scenario. And then, you know, they all kind of go off and do their own thing. Right. Yeah. Um, there's very few organizations, you know, like judo or taekwondo you know, that have global governing bodies where at least you've got to meet some standard there, but they don't do criminal background checks on people. They don't, you know, vet these guys. I mean, you, hopefully they have a level of, 
proficiency in the art, but then there's no real coaching and, you know, training expertise behind that. It's just, yeah. okay, we train in martial arts and this is it. And most of them only know how to train, you know, how to work out themselves. Right. Like, you know, how to train for you. Right. You, you know, in general, you know, they know how to train for themselves. They don't know, you know, you wind up getting that from experience, but you also wind up getting that through, you know, going through a coaching program or a training program. When I say training, like personal training um, or coaching, like, you know, you're, you're an assistant coach for several, you know, your player assistant coach for several years, then you become a head coach. So, you know, at least how, a, you know, how to manage a team, how to run a practice, how to, you know, put a, a syllabus together, like all this stuff. Um, you know, but a lot of the, a lot of what you're finding, they don't, you know? Right. Um, and again, the vast majority of it is, is innocuous. It's fine. You know, I mean, if it weren't, there would be, you know, a lot more of these things happening. Yeah. And then there'd be a big fucking public outcry about it. Right. <laughs> but, um, you know, make no mistake, there's still fuckery that goes on. I've had instructors who would talk you into, it's one thing to kind of clean the dojo. Right. I mean, that was a kind of a thing. I mean, you always definitely swept off the mats right before and and took care of the mats after before and after practice that was a gift so but some of them will have you clean the dojo then some of them will have you wash their car but for they're fucking they will, will miyagi your ass <laughs> yeah i i have uh dug a no i have dug a septic tank i have <laughs> painted a house mm -hmm. i have done a whole host of things unrelated to martial arts that would have cost money, mm -hmm. but to obviously have them done. But yeah, I did well, come on, washing washing the car is relevant, right? Right. Yeah, <laughs> washing the antenna. <laughs> There's that wax on, wax off shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, dude. You know these. You know. So you've got to be very. You know. I mean, like. And it still happens, you know, where guys are, you know, oh, you know, sensei wants this, sensei wants that, you know. And I saw that mostly with American or Western instructors. Yeah. My Japanese instructors give a shit. They're like, come in, you know, let's go. Yeah. Get the fuck out. You know what I mean? And they were so like – It was also – on the mat for a while. <laughs> Yeah, it was also judo, which is, you know, very, I mean, any of the grappling arts are very personal, you know, because you're like in each other's space or, you know, your roller, you're constantly on top of one another. So this is definitely more personal level than there is like karate, where yeah. you're standing in rows, you're kicking air, you're hitting pads, you're sparring, but it's point sparring, which is what it is. But um, it's not like, you know, it's very... Um, uh, uh, controlled and you know the difference main difference between the grappling arts other than or kickboxing I will say anything that goes anything where there's a, like a a uh, contact a real contact component attached to it you know you, you can find out if your shit works really good real quick or yes. not, right I mean it doesn't matter you know when you when you're teaching a judo class, and I've mentioned this before, and a guy who's a former NFL player comes in, and you lock up with him, and he's a D, he's a D lineman, I'm like, that's a serious dude. You know, you got to make your shit work on that. Now, if we were sitting there, and I was telling him to turn his foot on the floor on the round kick, you know, and to snap it, and to do this, or I'm sparring with him, and I'm tapping him in and out, yeah, man, I look like a fucking rock star. But as soon as I grab him and he doesn't want to get taken down. Yeah. You know, it's, and he just fucking bowls you over. <laughs> it's it's rough, dude. I always, always tell a story about Zoltan, freaking uh, Croatian kid. Um, he's probably like 220, maybe like 5'11. All he did was hang she rock all day. So he came in and we're like, okay, let's go. And like, he didn't have a gi yet. So we had no gi, and I'm like, I'm just, you know, I'm going with him. I'm like, let's just grip up a little bit. 
He literally like grabbed me and just picked me up. Yeah. You know, I'm like, oh shit. I'm like, look at that. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, yeah, I wish you had a gi on. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> was like, that, was a, that was a fucking mistake. You know, I was just like, oh god damn, man. I just like was just lifted right off my fucking feet. Fuck. You know. You know, so yeah. Um and then um yeah, so you know, I don't know. I, I just you know when you're when you're going to these places, you know, you're really you're taking your, you know, you have to be careful. So as a parent, because the takeaway on this is watch a class. Yeah. Watch what the hell's going. I mean, where are these fucking parents? It is literally the first day. The first day. Do you just hate this kid so much? <laughs> you know, that you're just like, yeah, fucking take him, do whatever you want with him. What is this? Like that fucking Cobra Cobra Kai, the Cobra Kai fucking gym. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, have I have Cobra Kai t-shirts, by the way. They're awesome. Yeah. Yes. That's just, that shit's coming back for one more season, right? Yeah, I think so. yeah, I think so. I, you know, but, you know, I mean, as a parent, it's my eight-year-old son. I'm like, I'm not, you don't drop him off on the first day. You watch the first few classes at least. Make sure he's freaking comfortable. Make sure he knows they're there. I mean, granted, you know, this is different cultures, but still, you know, it's freaking kid. If your you know, kid comes home with a bunch of fucking bruises. How do you not go back and fucking you know, smack the fucking instructor upside his fucking head. Look. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, what is going on? And now the parents are complaining, but again, you know, the kid got thrown like 30 times. Yeah. You know, by adults and bigger people. So he freaking good. He's got, he got concussed. I mean, shit. So yeah. And the other kids, you've got beaten. Like, what do you, where are these fucking parents? Yeah. 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 So I don't know. So anyway, on that note, it is July 4th weekend around here. We're actually going to be very mellow. Let's, yeah. Yeah. We're coming up on our Canada day here on the first, you know, is it July 1st? July 1st. Yeah. Oh, cool. All right. So what do you guys do? Ah, fuck. Not a whole hell of a lot. I mean, with the fucking smoke that we're all causing issues for, some shit has been canceled. <laughs> you guys cancel everything. <laughs> we, we do. We you fucking really do. do. You really do. It's that or we just throw masks on fucking everybody and their dogs. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, I said, I'm like, oh, man. I don't know. Yeah, I don't even know if we're going down the beach. This It's been, you know, with them all over the place and him working and getting ready for school. I mean, we're going down to like South Carolina in a couple of weeks and then, then we'll be down the shore for a few weeks. Then we'll be back and take him back to South. You know, he goes to school and then that's it. And probably September out, we'll go out to California and then, you know, then they'll be home and then we'll go out for her, you know, graduation. And then, yeah, a lot of shit. A lot of exciting, shit. Exciting stuff. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like said the um so the book will probably get launched in November. So we'll um get that going and um put the fucking book on your Christmas list. <laughs> yes. Hey, self defense for dummies, put it in the stocking. That's right. Put it, put better it, way to say I love you. <laughs> give it on day two of Hanukkah. You know? <laughs> That's right. Right. It's great for Kwanzaa. <laughs> If you can, if you can survive through day one, give it day to a day two. <laughs> day two. Don't save that shit for day eight. That's right. You know. So, all right, man. Cool. So, uh, yep, yeah, everybody, um, stay safe. Have a great uh, weekend. Until next time, uh, train honestly. <laughs>